There are many, many studies that have looked at fish oil or omega-3 fat consumption and heart health. We'll be walking through them together, discussing the nuances and tricky aspects to understanding fish oil's role, and not just fish oil, but omega-3s as a whole, on our cardiovascular system as well. Interestingly, an all-important area of health that fish oil does not seem to provide benefit, although many people think that it does. And instead of waiting, let's climb right into the driver's seat of that last statement. Fish oil's lack of an effect on an all-important area. Don't believe me? I think your life might be considered as all-important because we're talking about all-cause mortality. In every analysis that I reviewed, which consisted of up to 83 studies, omega-3 supplementation had no effect on a metric of life called all-cause mortality seen here. This is a, a forest plot of 14 studies, only 14 because these were the ones that looked into all-cause mortality. We see the studies listed on the left, along with a bunch of numbers that I won't go over everything here, but a few highlights of what's important. The risk ratio is an indication of the all-cause mortality risk. So if the line is over one, indicates no effect either way. And if the studies, the blue boxes, move to the left, there's a positive effect as in omega-3 supplementation reduces all-cause mortality. If they move to the right, they worsen all-cause mortality. Fortunately, we don't need to try to gauge all these uh, data individually as we can rely on the main effects diamond on the bottom. There's a blue one and a red one. I really love that the researchers did this because in meta-analyses, there are two statistical analyses that can be used, each with their strengths and weaknesses. I'd go over why each one matters, but that'll lead us down a rabbit hole. So I'll just mention that uh, I cover how to read this type of entire analysis in depth and step-by-step, -step, as well as help you make conclusions in my course where I teach you how to read studies to apply to your life. It's called the uh, Health Autonomy course. It's linked in the description if you're interested. Anyway, most analyses do not show both, only one. So I love that they did that here. We can see, however, regardless of the statistical test used, random or fixed, the diamonds land squarely on the one. And the statistics bear this out too. There's no effect of omega-3 supplementation on all-cause mortality. That's a pretty wild finding, isn't it? And like I said, this is consistent across the other independent analyses. Although I should note in a more comprehensive analysis, the research still indicates no effect, but the test for statistical significance was awfully close to the usual cutoff of 0.05 once the analysis was extended to over 40 studies. Still, as it stands, no effect of omega-3 consumption. We'll cover why in a little bit because what we're most interested in is how omega-3s affect our heart, our cardiovascular system. The idea behind omega-3s being beneficial for the heart comes down to many mechanisms, which honestly we just don't have time to get into all of them here because I'd like to focus on the clinical data. But among the most important is the fact that omega-3 fats can be integrated into your cell membranes. As they're integrated, they change the fluidity of the membrane, which means it makes the membrane less stiff and more adaptable. More specifically, omega-3s can inhibit the insertion in some instances of cholesterol domains, which are these sections of membrane that are packed with cholesterol molecules. These cholesterol domains can stiffen the membrane if overabundant, and since omega-3s inhibit their insertion, they keep the membrane more fluid. There's more nuance to that topic, but it'll honestly get more confusing if we get into those. You can imagine, though, that if your heart cells and your endothelial cells that uh, line your blood vessels are consistently in contact with high pressures, that's blood pressure in your cardiovascular system, reducing stiffness called arteriosclerosis could make the cells more amenable to that pressure. There's about 10 other mechanisms, but that's a discussion for another time. That explained, however, does the data in humans actually substantiate omega-3's benefits, or are we falling prey 
to mechanistic research, as is often the case. Well, let's turn to this analysis anew, and let's pop open more data. Yeah, I know it's a little overwhelming, but just hang on to the basic principles that I taught you when we discuss the all-cause mortality data. The one is the neutral effect, and focus your eyes on the diamonds. Okay, before we go on, I should explain what the measurements are here. What's nice about this analysis is that we're not just looking at one heart disease outcome, we're looking at MACE or major adverse, that's bad, cardiovascular events. Cardiovascular death or CV death stands for cardiovascular death and MI is myocardial infarction or heart attack. So three measures and our eyes tell us that the diamonds are definitely leaning to the left in favor of omega-3 supplementation, reducing the risk of all three. But the real question is, do the less biased statistical analyses agree? Well, it turns out that they do. According to this, there's a 5% reduced risk of MACE, 6 to 7% reduced risk of cardiovascular death, and about a 14% reduction in heart attack risk. These results to varying degrees were also consistent in these other two analyses, which is encouraging. Yet the Cochrane Review, which is among the highest standards for meta-analyses, offers a little uncertainty depending on the analysis that we look at. Some indicate no effect, while others indicate there is an effect. For example, looking at cardiovascular events, again, we see that the test for overall effect indicates no effect with a p-value above 0.05, sitting at 0.13. However, if we look at the analysis on cardiovascular death, the analysis indicates a mild benefit, statistically verified. I think overall, the poll of the majority indicates a likely effect of omega-3s, however. Now, I should note a few things before we go into this weird discrepancy between no benefit on all-cause mortality, yet we see improvements in cardiovascular death. I mean, how does that work? I've mentioned this in some of my other investigations, but in all of these analyses, omega-3 supplementation is compared against something else. Normally, we would expect it to be some sort of control group. Ideally, it should be some sort of inert substance, some placebo that the participants don't know about. This is the uh, type of thing that researchers will identify in a section of the analysis called the inclusion-exclusion criteria. They'll decide if they'll accept studies using non-placebo controls. This can skew the results because omega-3 uh, against placebo is a pure comparison, but if the omega-3 is compared against something else, the comparative results might be different. For example, in this analysis, the researchers included randomized control trials that also use controls with no placebo, or feeding participants omega-6 fats, or monounsaturated fats. Interestingly, even with that, the analysis still showed similar results as the pure placebo analyses from which I showed you the data before. So, it seems that the effects are relatively robust and consistent regardless of the comparator. Okay, we'll get into the uh, all-cause mortality discrepancy, but first I'd like to also point out that there are different types of omega-3s, and one in particular is considered the focus of heart health. Also, there's a, quite a lot of nuance in using omega-3s, like what happens when you're taking a statin or some other heart disease drug alongside, or when you replace other uns unsaturated fats and saturated fats with omega-3s, or if you decide you'd prefer only to consume plant-based omega-3s like alpha-linolenic acid. Well, I'll be covering all of that in the extended version of this video right here, which is included if you're part of the Physionic Insider community, and also comes along with a monthly exclusive podcast on the latest research, additional health investigations in a video and written form, and honestly much more. If you're interested, the link to join is in the description. I'd love to have you join as well as support my work. Now, what's with this uh, difference in results? So we know omega-3s positively affect cardiovascular health, and we know that they have no effect on all-cause mortality, at least based on the data that we have presently. So why? You can land on the answer through reasoning through the problem, or by understanding a statistical principle known as powering the analysis. In short, the key words are all cause, which means that it includes deaths from everything, including cancer, 
kidney failure, dementia, and every other disease under the sun, including heart disease. However, unlike a heart disease specific metric like cardiovascular health, where the data is 100% from cardiovascular studies, the all-cause mortality data is affected by so many factors that heart disease or cardiovascular disease only makes up a percentage of the data. And even if that percentage is quite large, it will be much lower than 100%. And it now requires many more times the data to tease out the effects because the data input from these cardiovascular studies is diluted by the other outcomes, cancer, kidney failure, etc. So what I'm saying is there might be an effect of omega-3s on all-cause mortality, but we don't have enough data to tease out the fine differences, which is why the analysis is not powered to detect an effect, since the main outcome of interest was cardiovascular. Hopefully that makes some sense, and if all else fails, I'll rely on, uh, trust me bro, I saw it on Reddit, and that should sway you. Okay, one more thing you likely want to know. How much? This is a trickier question to answer than you might think because different doses do different things. For example, high dose omega-3s, say four grams, has a significant impact on reducing blood triglycerides and even shows benefit in reducing cardiovascular disease risk. However, I would opt for something less than two grams of omega-3 because it still offers cardiovascular benefit yet may not raise the risk of certain heart problems that might arise if consumed at higher doses, which is what I explain right here.